Howdy y'all, welcome back to my RV14 build. Uh, here I'm just putting the rudder spar into the skins and getting ready to start riveting the, the rudder spar into the skeleton I made with the st stiffeners in the skins. Click, get everything clicked into place. Hold it all together. Trying a little bit different camera angle here for you. Next thing I have to do is uh, rivet the rudder skins to the counterbalance ribs using the rivets called out. So go through, just get everything and click it into place, and then start. And then I'll start riveting things. With my ever present buddy Rocky helping. So here I'm just putting some pop rivets into the spar to hold the shear clips that hold the st stiffeners in place. So it's the start of getting the spar in. Line rivets pretty easy. Just get them in the hole, pop them out, pop, 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 rivet, rivet, rivet. And there's Rocky helping out. At least he thinks he's helping. And I continue to blind rivet the shear clips to the spar. Not much to say here, like I said. All the plans do is have you put the blind rivets in, pop them out, blind rivets in, pop them out. Had a little bit, had to clear the paint out of the holes. You can see me taking a picture on for my EA builder's log. Make sure I got everything logged. I think I'm getting more views on my EAA page than I am on my YouTube page. Now here I'm getting the uh, strip along the bottom of the rudder in and clicoed in so I can rivet. Uh, it has to do the first eight rivets that are common to the skin and the the shim, or I don't know if it's a shim, heck, it's um, just a strip, not really a shim. I'm pointing a little bit there, because the, the instructions have you not rivet a hole that's right near the trailing edge, so I was kind of wondering about that. But I went ahead and started doing the rivets. I, Switched out to a shorter yoke arm that has a thin nose on it so I could get it in onto the rivets that were really close to the trailing edge. Next thing I have to do is you remove a few clecos, peel up the trailing edge just a bit, and then I get the rivet gun squeezer in there and then rip, do, do the rivet. Then once I have the squeezer all set set up, I just go ahead and rivet do the rest of the rivets with the squeezer. I highly recommend having that squeezer. It does help things go fast because once you get it set up, it makes a very consistent riveting. Now, unfortunately, I cut out where I decided to go ahead and put that last rivet that's close to the trailing edge before I put in the blind rivets that hold the bottom ribs together. So I couldn't see how, reading ahead, how we would get that rivet any other way. So before I did the blind rivets here that, that I'm putting in, I did that last rivet closest to the trailing edge because it just made it easy to get my squeezer in there and set that rivet. So here I'm just going through and putting the blind rivets that hold the two lower ribs together. There's 11 blind rivets you have to get in. Goes fairly quickly. Then I have to get all those rivets in, then you have to work getting in the rudder horn and rescuing the dog. Really wish he would figure out how not to get him tangled, himself tangled up around the bushes outside. So 
So here I'm starting to put the blind rivets in that hold the rudder horn in. And then there's some 470 rivets that I didn't have the camera running when I drove the 470 rivets in along the bottom, but I was able to get them all with the squeezer as well. And I sort of used a, a longer set on my squeezer and changed out to the longer yoke to get it in. But like I said, didn't have the camera running for that one. So here I'm just checking those 470s. Rescuing the dog. Oh, Rocky. Rocky, 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 what am I gonna do with you, dog? So here I'm putting in the rest of the rivets common to the skin and the strip. And then the last four rivets that hold the rudder horn and the skin together are just blind rivets. The very last rivet I couldn't do with the squeezer. You can see me had to buck that one in. Now here I'm starting to put the skin to the spar. So I did as much as I could with the squeezer. So anywhere where there's a kind of a cutout in the skin, I was able to get about two rivets before and two rivets after to get the, the cutout with the squeezer. The rest I have to go in with the bucking bar and the rivet gun. Now the rivet gun, I did what one of the forms said to do, which was I used a pivot head rivet gun, uh, trimmed back the rubber just a little bit so that the rubber wasn't too stiff. And that's pretty much eliminated me denting skins and turns out really well. The other thing I found is if I tape over the rivets, Prior to driving them, it prevents scratching the skins. It's, scratching is probably all right, but OCD kicks in and says, don't have scratches. So you can see the tape sitting on top. I just use a little strip of it and I keep moving it as I put more rivets in. Drive it with the rivet gun, buck it in, check it with my gauge. and continue to work my way up along the spar. It goes pretty well. Pretty easy access. I actually have some heavy Gorilla tape around my bucking bar so it doesn't scratch the spar as I'm driving the rivets in just so I don't scratch my paint job here a little bit later I had to go to a meeting now I'm back finishing it up so if you like what I'm doing like share subscribe leave comments below beat the algorithm love to hear what people think And that pretty much wraps it up for for day. Just about ready to roll the, the leading edge and then work on the trailing edge. Thanks to everybody. Bye.